record an accounts payable invoice, you just need to go to accounts payable, processing, and then record invoices slash credit notes. Choose your company, and then choose your subledger if you have multiple, and then choose your date of record. So the date of record is when this invoice will be recorded on your general ledger accounts. It's also when it will show up on the supplier inquiry. If you hit enter in Jonas, it will pick today's date. If you're in the same month, but with like a different date of record, you just have to put in the number. So for example, for the first of this month that I'm in, all I have to do is put in one and hit enter, and it will default to this month. Then choose your supplier. The invoice number can be typed in here, or if you do a lookup, you can actually see the previous invoices for this vendor and choose the next available number. The next option is invoice date. So invoice date is different from date of record as it would be the date that's actually printed on the invoice. And you can choose to select invoices to be paid when you do your payment run by invoice date or by due date. After invoice date, it has the option for a due date and the due date is by default one month away. Or if you drop down the list, you can make the due date the same the date of record. You can put this invoice on hold or if you select other date, it will pop up and give you a different due date. Purchase order number and reference and job both refer to other Jonas modules. Um, and then you have your use tax. So if you are a company that uses use tax, what you'll have to do is just select which use tax code this invoice belongs to. On this side of the screen, you have your purchase amount. So here's where you'll put in the total amount for the invoice before taxes if there is any. Then you have your options to put in sales tax, to put in a discount earned, or to put in a second set of taxes. Here you can put in a sticky note. So this will be a note that's associated with the invoice on vendor accounts as well as on the GLs. And you also have the option to add documents. So if you are a document management viewer, holder of that module, what you can do is add documents such as a scan of the actual invoice. Once you've got all your information in, you can hit OK, and it will pop up and ask you for the account distribution. So this is where should the expense side of this, of this invoice go? So what you would do is find the expense GL account. If you hit enter through the reference, it will pull in the invoice number, and enter again will pull in the name of the supplier for the description. So this is what shows up on your general ledger account inquiries. Enter one more time to distribute the full amount, or key in the amount that you want going to this GL account, and then have a second line with a different GL account if you do have an invoice going to multiple accounts. Hit exit, and then OK, and you can proceed with another invoice, or if that's all the invoices you need to input for today, hit exit again. You'll get a summary of your invoices, including how much is set to pay, how many invoices were entered, and at this point you can hit preview to preview the report, and then post to actually post this invoice, or you can hit review or more to go back and edit or review what you've put in. So here we have a copy of our audit trail. So all AP invo invoice audits come with the audit trail of PJ. It gives you a breakdown sorted by supplier of each invoice, as well as a summary of the GL postings down at the bottom. So you can see here by default, my accounts payable control account is getting hit with the liability. And then I selected this expense GL account to offset that liability posting. You can also record invoices in batches. So under accounts payable, processing, and then set up edit AP batches, this is a second way to put in invoices. And you'll notice this screen looks very similar to the record invoices slash credit note screen. The difference between the two are the record invoices slash credit note screen, which we just looked at, allows you to enter in invoices but you have to either post them or you will lose everything that you've entered in if you try to close out and open up something else in Jonas. By using setup slash edit AP invoice batches, you can enter in a few invoices, close it, look something up in Jonas, come back in and all of your invoices will still be there, not posted, but ready to be posted whenever you are ready. It's also a really good tool if you have one person entering the invoices and one person doing the check and balance to make sure that the invoices are correct because one person can enter them in and then the person who does the check can double check it on the batch and then update the batch. So to use Setup Edit AP Batches, you'll choose your company, choose your subledger if you have multiple, and then you'll have to add a batch number. 
So the batch number can be today's date, it can be the number one, it can be anything you want it to be, as long as it's unique to the different batches you might have going at one time. After this, you'll choose your date of record, and if you are going to use AP invoice batches, all the invoices in the batch do have to have the same date of record. Choose your supplier, and then go ahead and key in your first invoice number. Choose your first invoice date as well as your due date. Attach any PO, reference, or use tax information, and then go ahead and put in your purchase amount. Hit OK, just as you would with Record Invoices Credit Notes, and go ahead and distribute this invoice by hitting Enter through the reference and description to pull in the invoice number and description, and then Enter again to distribute the full amount of the invoice. You'll notice on this time, the expense account was already selected for me. This is something that can be selected by AP Supplier, so you can have a default expense account for each individual AP Supplier if you so choose. Hit OK. And then you'll see here I have the option to go ahead and start adding in more invoices. Or if I hit exit, I'll get a summary of my batch, which I can then go ahead and print. Or I can just save it. So I'll save my batch. When you're ready and you've put in all the invoices in the batch, you can go ahead and go to Accounts Payable, Processing, and then Update AP Batches. Choose your company, choose your subledger, and then choose the batch you'd like to update off the list. You can preview and then post the batch and it will generate a PJ audit just like you've seen with Record Invoices Credit Notes as well as post those invoices to be paid. So you can see here I have my audit trail. Again, it's a PJ audit trail because it comes from accounts payable. Sorted by supplier, I have a breakdown of each invoice in my batch as well as a summary at the bottom of the entries being made to my general ledger.